Southern California rocked by a 5-1 magnitude quake as the region is battered by a historic tropical storm. To California today, first the southern part of the state was rattled by an earthquake and then tropical storm Hillary made landfall. California, a place known for its beautiful scenery and bustling cities, recently experienced a very strong earthquake. This earthquake not only shook the ground for many people, but also caused unexpected and devastating consequences afterwards. In today's episode, we're about to delve into the intriguing realm of California's current situation, exploring the potential risks of what might unfold. This is Reveal the Mystery. If you are curious to learn the mystery of the world, space and beyond, consider subscribing. It was just another day in California. However, the people had no idea that far beneath the ground, a massive earthquake was brewing. When the earthquake finally hit, its sheer power sent shock waves throughout the state. The epicenter, deep within the Earth's crust, became the center of unimaginable energy release. These vibrations radiated outward, causing the solid ground to turn into a dangerous rolling surface. This earthquake was really big, and nothing like it had happened in California for a very long time. It felt like it went on forever, even though it was only a few minutes. During those minutes, the floors in buildings moved, buildings made weird noises, and the ground felt unsteady. What made it even scarier was how powerful the shaking was. Every second showed how strong nature can be, and how easily the things people built can get damaged. Roads broke, buildings fell down, and cracks appeared in infrastructure like roads and bridges. In some places, the ground even opened up and swallowed whatever was on top of it. The area near the center of the earthquake changed a lot and would take a long time to fix. Besides the physical damage, the earthquake messed up society. Electricity went out, so there were blackouts everywhere, and communication systems couldn't handle all the messages. Trains and buses stopped running, leaving many people stuck, and hospitals had a hard time taking care of injured people because their buildings were messed up too. Other bad things happened because of the earthquake. Gas pipes broke, causing fires, water pipes broke, flooding streets and houses, and dust from collapsed buildings made it hard to see and breathe. But even with all this chaos, people helped each other. Firefighters and police took big risks to save people, and neighbors looked out for each other. Communities came together, showing how strong people can be when things are tough. Eventually, the shaking stopped, but the effects of the earthquake lasted a long time. It reminded everyone that our planet is always changing, and we need to be ready for unexpected things. California had to figure out how to fix all the damage and make things better. The earthquake wasn't just a natural disaster, it was a moment for Californians to think about what's important, respond to challenges, and rebuild. Plus, there was a reminder that tsunamis could be a problem for coastal areas, showing how powerful the Earth's forces can be in shaping California's beautiful but sometimes dangerous landscape. Tsunamis are a natural disaster that can emerge abruptly from large-scale disturbances in or near ocean basins. Among the various triggers, a significant earthquake, particularly one occurring beneath the ocean floor or close to the coast, has the potential to displace massive volumes of water. For California, a state already reeling from the effects of a massive earthquake, the threat of a tsunami became a grim addition to an already fraught situation. In response, warning systems were promptly activated and sirens blared along the coastline, urgently urging residents to seek higher ground. Evacuation routes, often practiced but seldom used, suddenly became paths of safety for thousands attempting to escape the potential sea onslaught. When the first waves reached the shore, their power became evident. These were not the regular gentle waves that typically lapped the Californian coast. Instead, they surged forward with relentless force, consuming everything in their path. Beachfront properties, once coveted for their picturesque views, now stood at the front line of destruction. Piers, boardwalks and marinas 
symbols of leisure and recreation, faced the full brunt of the water's might. In some areas, the sea eerily receded just before the waves arrived, revealing a landscape typically hidden from human eyes. This phenomenon, known as drawback, served as a precursor to the tsunami's arrival, providing a small window of time, a grace period, before the full force of the wave struck. The ecological impact was profound. Delicately balanced coastal ecosystems, essential for local wildlife, were disrupted. Saltwater infiltrated freshwater sources and sand dunes, natural barriers to sea surges, were reshaped or washed away. Yet, amidst this watery chaos, moments of human tenacity and ingenuity emerged. Boaters and surfers, intimately familiar with the ocean's moods, became impromptu rescuers, navigating the surging waters to help those trapped. Communities rallied together, sharing resources, providing shelter, and offering solace. For days after the initial waves struck, aftershocks from the earthquake posed the risk of further tsunamis. The coast remained on high alert, with residents and authorities closely monitoring any changes in the sea's behavior. The threat of another wave, another surge of destruction, loomed large over a region already grappling with recovery. The tsunamis that followed the earthquake were a stark reminder of the interconnectedness of Earth's processes. An event deep within the Earth's crust had ramifications that extended far beyond the immediate epicenter, touching lives both on land and along the coast. California's experience underscored the need for holistic preparedness, one that considers not just the immediate effects of a disaster, but also its cascading consequences. The waves may have receded, but their impact will be felt and studied for years to come, shaping policies, infrastructure, and the relationship between Californians and their ever-dynamic coastline. While coastal regions braced for tsunamis, inland areas faced a different but equally menacing threat, floodwaters. The earthquake had not only wreaked havoc on structures and coastlines, but also disrupted natural waterways, leading to widespread inundation. The journey of these floodwaters began at their benign sources, rivers, lakes, and reservoirs, which were sources of life and sustenance for countless communities. However, the earthquake transformed these water bodies, causing dams to breach, rivers to change course, and lakes to overflow their banks. As the waters descended toward the sea, they absorbed runoff from the rain-soaked ground, further swelling due to the quake's disturbances. On their way, the floodwaters encountered towns and cities where humans had settled, often with little regard for the unpredictability of nature. Roads turned into rivulets, parks became ponds, and residential areas, especially those at lower elevations, were quickly submerged, with streets and homes inundated with muddy, debris-filled waters. In our highly connected world, it's crucial to realize that getting ready for disasters shouldn't be limited to specific countries or regions. Instead, countries should work together and share their knowledge, resources, and best ways to prepare for and deal with natural disasters. By doing this, we can all become better at handling these kinds of emergencies. The recent earthquake in California, with all its wide-ranging effects, was a tough test for how well the state was prepared and how it responded.